Well, in his speech, Ed Miliband targeted UKIP, saying the party had got away with it for too long. I'll be speaking to the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, in a moment, but first here's a clip from 2012, which the Labour Party says proves a vote for UKIP is a vote for privatisation of the NHS. I think we're going to have to move to an insurance-based system of health care. Um, frankly, I would feel more comfortable that my money would return value if I was able to do that through the marketplace of an insurance company than just us trustingly exactly. giving 100 billion a year to central government. Well, joining me now from Rochester is Nigel Farage. Uh, Mr Farage, there you have it, an insurance-based system run by private companies. That's what you really think, isn't it? Well, it's a bit rich of uh, Ed Miliband to criticise UKIP on health policy uh, when, of course, it was the Labour government uh, that privatised much of the NHS through PFI contracts, uh, which have made a lot of private equity companies very large sums of money uh, and not been good for our health service. Okay, they also but... outsourced, of course, an awful lot of contracts like cleaning. So, so okay. if anybody's privatised the NHS, it's Labour. What I was doing in 2012, in answer to a question, was saying, let's have a think. Let's think outside the box. Let's think about the kind of health system that the French operate, the kind of health system that the Dutch operate. And let's, before we formulate a UKIP policy, consider all the options. And you we still want to consider the, the option of an insurance-based system? Decided... No, no, we've dropped that. Well, we haven't dropped it, we haven't accepted it. And in fact, I'll be laying out tomorrow in the independent newspaper, UKIP's health policy. I was going to wait and do it later, uh, but given uh, some of these comments that have been made, I'll be laying it out in full tomorrow, and we will absolutely be supporting a national health service that is free at the point of care. OK, does that apply also to your star new recruit, uh, Douglas Carswell, because he's written in a book uh, that he wants patients to be able to opt out of the NHS like Singapore? Yeah, I know he does. And, bit different, and this, this is the thing. Different people have different views, and we are a party that are going to debate issues. What I can't accept is the Andy Burnham line of thought, which is you don't question anything. And if you don't question things, you know, you finish up with things like Mid-Staffordshire Hospital. So we will debate things, think about things. We'll, we will formulate our policies at national executive level and fight our manifesto on that policy. As I say, if you read tomorrow's Independent, I've laid out our health policy. So will Douglas Carswell be able to keep his opt-out policy? Uh, Douglas Carswell will be standing as a UKIP candidate on a UKIP manifesto. Well, let, let me ask you about working mums then, because that's also something that Ed Miliband has taken you to task on. You said, I don't, uh, probably don't need to yeah, remind well, you, a few well, months ago, you said that a woman in the city with a client base was for, worth far less to her employers when she returned from maternity leave. Well, I'm a working mum. I took a look, few months off to have a baby, uh, lost contact with my contacts for a few months. Am I worth less to my employer? Well, what Ed Miliband did was to piece together uh, a series of half statements and half truths um, in an attempt to fight back against UKIP because he knows that here in Rochester and elsewhere there are lots of Labour voters, old Labour voters, who are turning to UKIP. Well, hang on a second. No, excuse me. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting. I'm sorry for interrupting, and, but he quoted happy. you exactly and correctly on working mums because you said a woman who has a client base, no, has a child and takes two or three years off, is worth far less to her employer. I'm asking you as a working mum, am I worth far less to my employer yeah. now? A man that takes... A man, that, a man that takes a fortnight's holiday uh, struggles when he gets back from a fortnight's holiday. I, was, I wasn't talking about doctors or lawyers or television presenters or actually most jobs in this country. I was at a city conference talking specifically about brokerage rooms in the city of London uh, you know, and it didn't well, extend any further than that. But hang on, it's but, exactly the same but, for me. I lost contact with my contacts for a few months. Does that mean I'm worth less? Yeah. So, sorry, which brokerage house did you work for? Well, no, but it's exactly the same. I have contacts who I keep in touch with all the time. It's a very high-pressured job. No. Am I worth less as well? No, no, you, you, but women you, in the city are worth well, less. You, you clearly have no. You, you clearly, you clearly have no knowledge of the very tiny part of the city that I was talking about, namely people that work in dealing rooms with two or two or three big corporate accounts. And I, and I made the point that in the years I worked in the city, I never dared take more than a week off on holiday. It's that kind of world. OK, this week you said you were open to doing a deal with uh, Ed Miliband, with Labour. Uh, is that deal no, now off? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, no, you know, again, look, first things first, if Ed Miliband wants to have a go and take me on, that's fine. I'll do a televised debate with Ed Miliband any night of the week. Easy. As far as what happens after the next election, look, our objective is to win the Rochester by-election next Thursday, to get a good number of MPs into Westminster next year, and then 
depending on who the biggest party is, they may well come to us and need some support. We would not give that support to anybody unless the British people next summer got a full free and fair referendum so that we can decide whether we're part of the European project or not. Nigel Farage, thank you very much for joining me. John.